Hi. Hi. Thank you for joining me. My name is John New. This is John 2028 Apologetics. And today's video is going to be on Mormonism. The question or objection is Are Mormons the LDS Church, also known as Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints? Are they our brothers and sisters in Christ? Um, so, this video could easily be four hours long, just the history of the Mormon Church, even though it's not hasn't been around that long for almost about 200 years but um it's uh got a lot of research and so this is just the top of the tip of the iceberg on it but we're here to answer this question okay so can you know an orthodox christian someone who believes in the father son and spirit someone who believes in jesus christ as lord god and savior can we view them orthodox christian belief can we view a mormon as a brother or sister in Christ. So first let's look at some of their beliefs, okay? Um, so the founder is Joseph Smith Jr. He was born in Sharon, Vermont on December 23rd of 1805. In 1820, after praying in the wilderness, he was visited by God the Father and God the Son. This is his claim. And person, so they, they physically manifested themselves in front of him. And to summarize this meeting, he told they told him, you know, the true Christianity since the apostles has been fallen off. Because Joseph wanted to know the true religion. He wanted to, to truly worship God. Okay? So this is what he's saying happened after he asked God this question. Alright? So and then God the Father and God the Son, who manifested themselves before him, told him that he that he could restore the original Christian faith okay and Smith writes about this experience in great deal in the book the pearl of the great price and that's Joseph Smith history 1 1 through 25 and of course Joseph Smith was chosen for this so basically Smith is a restorer of true Christianity he's the one that's going to bring back the original Christian faith all right. So, and then in 1823, so a few years later, he claimed the angel Moroni came to him by his bedside and gave him the golden plates or told him where they were going to be, which became a, uh, later the Book of Mormon. He claimed to be later also met by John the Baptist in person, okay, whom was sent by Peter, James, and John to Pennsylvania. This is also in the great are the Pearl of the Great Price 1, 68 through 73. And after this, in 1830 in Pennsylvania, the Golden Plates were finalized and translated, which is the Book of Mormon. Okay, so Galatians. I'm going to just hit this with Scripture. No, they're not our brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay? This is a cult. Just because they have the word Jesus Christ in their title means nothing okay you like rat rat poison is 99.9 .9 food it can have food it does have food all in it but there's that one element in it that makes it where it will kill you and i'm using this you know um speaking in hyperbole here with religion or faith okay as Paul wrote, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, he is to be accursed. And Joseph Smith was a false prophet. Many of his prophecies did not come into fruition. And his, this cult, this belief is from the pits of hell. I'm not going to pull any punches in this video. Okay? I'm not here to make anyone feel good. Or I'm not here to um, be politically correct. Okay? I'm here to tell you what the gospel says. Alright? So, so here are some uncomfortable beliefs with 
the Mormon Church. They have strayed away from some of this today, but it's got to be mentioned. And here's another way where the, the original beliefs of the Mormon Church contradict Scripture. All right, and that is the racial undertones at the beginning teaching of Mormonism, which contradicts Scripture. Because Scripture teaches that we're all terrible creatures, black and white, Native American, Asian, doesn't matter. We're all incapable of salvation on our own. We're all sinners. We all fall short. And we all need a Savior. And that one beautiful Savior came and saved us. The Lord God Jesus Christ. Okay, Romans 3.10 quotes Psalm 14 that none of us are good. No, not a one. And Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short. When the earliest teachings, they uplifted the white people and made statements about African Americans or Native Americans. In 2 Nephi 5.21, they were white speaking about people who aren't white or won't, will no longer be white. So they were cursed with their skin color. They were white and exceeded fair and delightsome that they might not be inciting unto my people. The Lord God did cause a skin of blackness to come upon them. They also believe that Christ visited North America around 400 AD and met a group of people called the Nephites. And there was a battle that took place in 421 AD and this is eventually where Smith dug up the golden plates, and we're gonna, and it's called the Hill of Cumorah. We're gonna go over the, the golden plates here in a second, okay? Um, a little more background on the family, because it's important to know who you're talking about, and where they come from. The background, and the background. The scripture does this with everyone as well, from Moses, Joseph. Everyone gets a background because. You know, the, the writers of, uh, of the books of the Old Testament and the New wanted you to understand a little bit about who you were reading. So we're going to talk just a little bit about uh, Joseph Smith's family here so you can get a better grip and understanding of who he is. Senior, his father, were both active treasure seekers, and they used all kinds of wild devices like uh, divining rods, talismans, and ritual magic. Yes, even that. Okay, his father would later be one of the eight witnesses to the divinity of the Book of Mormon. Imagine that. This book would be translated through a peep stone or a seer stone. So only this stone can tell you what it accurately translates to. All right. On March 26, 1826, uh, there was actually a court case, New York versus Smith court hearing, ruled him guilty of money digging. That was the... Um, the charge and conviction it was called money digging and it claimed he had a stone which he could find treasure and the earth the peep stone okay is also called uh, stone gazing which was illegal in the 1820s and this was the, the view of the state you know the state the, viewed this as an occult practice and they also charged him with glass looking. So these are the terms that the state of New York used at the time. So this wasn't their first rodeo. If they already had, um, they already had, you know, court cases and stuff where they could um, substantiate these claims and convict someone. So this wasn't their first rodeo dealing with these types of these types of claims. These these um, snake oil salesman uh, schemes. Okay. And there's a fantastic book by Dr. Quinn, Early Mormonism and the Magic Worldview. And you can read, and this is written in 1987. You can find all this stuff, the pictures and pages and all of it. And I, I suggest you go to page 194 and read to 207, and it also includes the magic reference. And later, Quinn would also be excommunicated from the Latter-day Saint Church after his research and refusing to be silent. All right. And later on, Brigham Young would be the first successor from Smith where we get BYU, Brigham Young University in Utah. Okay? Now, there are two major groups 
of Mormonism, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, that's the one in Salt Lake City, Utah, and the Community of Christ, so that's in Independence, Missouri. Um, authority is under the priesthood titles. You have two priesthood titles. You got the Aaronic, that's the lower, and the Melchizedek, which is higher. And it also variations by their age. So male Mormon, normally males, a Mormon around 12 years or over, is the Aaronic, and the ones deemed to be worthy, once they get past that stage, they go to the Melchizedek, which is about 18 years or older. Now I'm just going to beat up on Mormons here, okay? Understand I'm not pulling any punches because this is about salvation. And if anyone's watching this video and they're contemplating joining Mormonism, just know that you've been warned. So when you're on Judgment Day, you know. And this also, this video comes personal to me because I'm very close to a young man who I've known since he was 11, 12 years old who's a Mormon. Okay? And I pray for him almost every day. And I maintain contact in his life. So this isn't, I get no satisfaction out of this. The only satisfaction I get um, is that the glory and wonders of our Lord God and Savior are glorified. They're, they're said. Okay? Alright, I'm by His grace that I'm not under this curse. Alright? So, Mormons are known for their relent relentless missionary work, which I actually admire. How many Christians do we tuck, till, and run, or do we give in? They don't, and they follow a false gospel. They also have large families. That's true. I know everyone jokes and makes fun of Mormons for having big families. Well, it's this, the data is in. It's true. The birth rate is 28.1 per thousand versus the average American is 15.9. So it's pretty much double. All right. They're highly involved in academics, in sports, music. They're, they're known to be good athletes. Um, they got a good uh, um, choir and BYU and etc. The Mormon Tabernacle is pretty famous. All right. They got, they're also known for their sound moral traits. They're extremely devoted to their family and the teaching of the church. And yes, of course, how can you not mention polygamy? Polygamy was practiced until 1890 with multiple court documents and convictions, even with Joseph S. Smith, who is, I believe, the grandson of Joseph Smith. Okay? And there's all types of court paperwork and documents that goes with this. So yes, they did support polygamy. Now, they do believe in the Bible if it's correctly translated and it's interpreted by the LDS, along with the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine of Covenants, and the Pearl of the Great Price. So these are all holy books. Okay? Um, Mormons are not monotheistic. We are monotheistic. We believe in one God. Three distinct persons. One being of God. He's manifested himself in three distinct persons of Father, Son, and Spirit. That is, a, that is the Orthodox Christian stance. Mormons are polytheistic. Poly. Poly. They believe in multiple gods. An infinite amount. And our planet Earth is an example of other planets which are inhabited and ruled by other gods and goddesses. To whom these gods and goddesses were once just human as well. So we can all become gods. Sound familiar in the garden? Just a little bit. So it's a it's a process that you you will get to. Okay? And humankind is in the same likeness or the species as God. Alright? And their temples are very well constructed and reserved for these celestial marriages that people have and the ceilings of the baptisms and of course are forbidden to us me and you if you're not Mormon listen to this you're a Gentile or a non-Mormon okay 
They believe the Trinity is three gods. So they believe in Father, Son, and Spirit, but they believe each one is a god, not the god, represented one being of Yahweh. Okay? The, the God the Father, and then he laid with a goddess wife in a sexual nature, which produced Jesus and then the Holy Spirit. And also, Jesus is the brother of Satan. Now, of course, this contradicts scripture. I can't even begin to go how out of depth and how out of scripture this is. This is blasphemy by the oomph degree, payable by eternal damnation. And, of course, we believe, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, Deuteronomy 6.4. Also believe that Peter, James, and John visited Joseph Smith as angels. So not only John the Baptist, Jesus, and the Father, but he was also visited by Peter, James, and John. Okay, in 1829, he spoke of this in 1835, so about six years later. Um, he also visited uh, Adam and Eve in the garden. All right, and the garden was visited by Peter, casting out Satan from the garden. Here's some uncomfortable quotes that go with the uncomfortable racial undertones of Mormonism. Joseph Smith is quoted as saying, and there's many more, the Book of Mormon is the most correct of any book on earth, and I have more to boast of that than any man had. I am the only man that has ever been able to keep a whole church together since the days of Adam. A large majority of the whole have stood by me. And listen to this. And neither Paul, Peter, nor Jesus ever did that. I boast that no man ever did such work as I. The followers of Jesus ran away from him, but the LDS never ran away from me yet. And that is mentioned and quoted in History of the Church 6, page 408, or excuse me, from 408 to 409. Okay. They also believe salvation is a resurrection with the exaltation to Godhead, and it must be earned through self-merit, works, and also practicing the Old Testament tithing in the temple is a, is a requirement. They will give one-tenth, so they believe in that part of the Old Testament where that tithing goes, but they don't believe in Deuteronomy, which is Deuteronomy 6.4, which is mind-boggling, so... They practice and they want people to practice parts of the Old Testament when it comes to tithing, but you but they ignore the most quintessential verse in all of Scripture and the the foundation of our monotheistic belief in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that is there is only one God. I'm not implying anything, but I am stating something that maybe is easily implied. But I will make another um, statement that within the church, within their church and beliefs, they do try to integrate Mormonism beliefs into just you know the common person say an immigrant and this is why they generally do go to um, places where there's lower education lower income and they try to take common words that are orthodox Christian and intertwine it with their own beliefs so someone who's say from a different part of the world and they're like hey I want to become a Christian or I'm interested in, in, in learning about Christianity and they meet a Mormon missionary and they're like, well, I mean, I've heard about this Jesus. Uh, this, they worship this Jesus guy. And then they're like, yeah, well, we worship Jesus. Yeah, 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 here, here. And matter of fact, he's for everyone. He even came over to North America. And he um, wanted everyone to know his word because you know, why do you think there's so many different denominations? Look at all these different denominations. Catholics and Baptists and Methodists, Orthodox, and so you're not confused and that's what Joseph Smith was he was confused so he asked God and God manifested himself and gave us the Book of Mormon and helped us get back on track because we're all supposed to be one body right 
So they'll say stuff like that, and they'll use Christian words, orthodox words, to try to integrate it. Like, so, like, say, for instance, about the Holy Spirit, but they're in direct contradiction. Once you really look at it, especially when you apply it to Scripture. Okay? So, I'm going to read this from you from Kingdom of the Cults, all right? So it says, It is interesting to observe that in their desire to emulate orthodoxy where possible, the Mormons describe the Holy Ghost in the following terms. The term, this is Mormon describing the Holy Spirit, okay? We talked about Jesus. We talked about God, the Father. We talked about the apostles coming down, and John the Baptist, okay? I mean, did he come down with his head in his hand? I don't know. Who knows, right? With the way this, with the way this, they believe, who knows, right? We know he's octated in a new body, right? He's worshiping the risen Savior in a new body. We know that. That's what we believe. The term Holy Ghost and his common synonyms, Spirit of God, Spirit of the Lord, or simply Spirit, Comforter, and the Spirit of Truth, occur in scriptures where plainly different meanings referring to some cases to the person of the God, the Holy Ghost, and other instances to the power and authority of its great personage or its agency through which he ministers. The Holy Ghost undoubtedly possesses personal powers and affections. These attributes exist in him in perfection. Thus he teaches and guides, testifies of the Father and Son, reproves for sin, speaks, commands, and commissions. There are no figurative expressions but plain statements of attributes of characters of the Holy Spirit. That's in the Talmage, the Articles of Faith 115. And then when you go to the Talmage and recall it, it says this. It, is, it has been said, therefore, that God is everywhere present. But this does not mean that the actual person of any one member of the Godhead can be physically present in more than one place at one time, admitting their personality of God. We are compelled to accept the fact of his uh, materiality, indeed of immaterial, being under which meaningless names some have sought to designate the coordination of God, cannot exist. For the very expression of the contradiction in terms, if God possesses a form, that form is of necessary to define proportions. So here's a contradiction in the Mormon theology, if ever there was one. Okay, The Talmud declares the Holy Spirit is a, is a personage of spirit, obviously an immaterial being, yet not, not possessing a form of material nature. Since not limiting to ex um, extension in space and therefore rendering it possible for him to occupy at one time more than one space to such limits. So, everything that they believe, everything they say goes against Orthodox Christianity to its core. They just take Christian words and they... Those, oh yeah, I've heard the word being, I've heard the Holy Spirit called comforter, and this sounds about right, this sounds about right, but they're limiting God here. Clearly, they're limiting God. The Holy Spirit is a personage of spirit, one of the Mormon gods according to the doctrine of covenants. He is an immaterial being possessed of a spiritual form and defined proportions. Mormon theology here appears to have really become confused at the roots. Yeah. So he's... They're just taking the words that we use and they're putting their own theology into it. And how... I know that was a boring read, but you have to understand. Like, that's... That's how... This is a, this is a common play. This is a... This is a common theme that, that even Satan himself, what he did was he, he took the scripture out of context and tried to tempt Jesus with it by quoting scripture and taking words and, and taking scripture and, and trying to intertwine his own meaning into it. That's an old play by the enemy. And that's what happened here. Okay? Now, like I said, I can have... I can go on and on and on about this. I can show you the court documents. I can show you uh, how they differ in the virgin birth of Christ. I mean, it's... I mean, just how they believe how they're saved through their own works. And each one, each one of their works is a process. And it can eventually lead 
to um, you becoming a god. It's evil. It's satanic. And it's an unsaving um, belief. Okay? So no, they're not our brothers and sisters in Christ. If you know a Mormon, they are very smart, very educated. They know, especially the ones who go on mission trips, know your scripture. Okay? And um, pray for them. They need to they know the true God. All right? If you got any questions or comments, please put them down here. Try to keep this video as short as possible. Thank you for listening. God bless you in Jesus' name.